Hi parents and friends. Um, I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of a background on what is expected of your second grader uh, for the habitat diorama. So over the winter break, the student should be doing a diorama on their habitat of choice. So the students can either choose the desert, the forest, the rainforest, or the ocean habitat. And what you want to do is you want to find either a shoebox or a medium-sized box for the students to start their diorama. And you want to get them materials. You can get colored paper, crayons, markers. Uh, some students have used clay. Be creative in, in what the students use to make their animals and their plants um, for their habitat. So I just wanted to give you a, a demonstration on what the students will be doing on January 3rd when they come back. Their diorama is due on January 3rd. So here is my diorama. This is my example. And I'm going to just give you my presentation as if this, you were a student um, listening to the demonstration um, later on today. So this is my desert habitat. I chose the desert because the animals are so interesting and the landforms are all so beautiful. I used colored paper, a sponge, clay, yarn, sand, glue, rocks, and pipe cleaners while making my diorama. I used a sponge to make my cactus because a sponge is very similar to a cactus. Both of them hold in their water so that uh, they don't dehydrate in the hot, hot sun. I used a fuzzy piece of yarn to make my teddy bear choya because a teddy bear choya is really fuzzy like yarn. The barrel cactus back in the back is just drawn onto the colored paper because I wanted to demonstrate that there are other ways that the students can create their diorama. They don't have to use other materials. They can draw on the background in their diorama. I used clay to make my camel and the other animals that I have in here are birds and I have a snake right here that is made out of pipe cleaner. On the bottom of my diorama I, I filled it with uh, sand so I have I, I first put down lots of glue and then I put the sand on top so that it really looked or gave that that visual of being in a desert habitat. So the back of my diorama is a blue sky. Whenever I think of the desert I think blue sky and I have a bright bright yellow sun. I put rocks around my cactus because it to me there there are lots of rocks um, in the desert in combination with the different sands. So now I just talked about what is in my diorama. I explained my animals and my plants. I also described what I use to make all of my materials and my animals. So now I'm going to give you the paragraph on um, so now I'm going to give you the paragraph on the 10 facts that the student should be able to explain while giving their presentation on January 3rd. So I learned so many facts about the desert. Did you know that it rains less than 10 inches of rain per year in the desert? The animals and plants in the desert have to adapt to these dry conditions. All of the landforms in the desert are beautiful. There are columns and arches. There are sand dunes in the desert and they're so beautiful. Lots of different animals in the desert are either nocturnal or diurnal. Diurnal is when the animal is awake during the day and nocturnal is when the animal is awake at night. Animals in the desert are also classified as either herbivores, omnivores, or carnivores. A carnivore is a, an animal that only eats meat. An omnivore is an animal that eats both plants and meat. And an herbivore is an animal that eats just plants. Another fact about the desert is that it is very hot and dry. It's very hot during the day. But it's very cold at night. Some deserts get as cold as 40 degrees at night. 
If you notice in my diorama, I have a flower on the top of my cactus. Flowers only come out at night because it is much, much too hot during the day for them to come out. As you saw, I listed at least seven facts about my diorama. Your students are asked to give ten facts in their second paragraph. Their paragraph can either be written, handwritten, or it can be typed. Everyone was sent home with their uh, rubric for their diorama, so I encourage you to take a look at it with your child as you make the diorama and as you write their paragraphs for their presentation. I hope this was a helpful guide, and enjoy making your dioramas with your children. Bye guys, happy holidays.